welcome back to Old Ways Rising Farm, and we're going to be planting some spring vegetables here this morning. One of the biggest groups of spring vegetables, most popular grown worldwide, are the brassicas or the coal crops, as they're often called. Uh, we're we're going we're to gonna talk about several different species here, but the most well-known are the species in the genus Brassica, which are your <coughs> cabbages and mustards. So there's really three species that are the most common. Brassica oleracea is the species of European cabbage, kale, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, <coughs> uh, cauliflower, all of those things. The, that's Brassica oleracea. Second really common one is Brassica rapa. Brassica rapa is your Asian cabbages, are all Brassica rapa, your bitter greens, like Mediterranean bitter greens, like rapini and stuff like that, is Brassica rapa, and turnips are Brassica rapa. We'll see if I can get all the way through this without being so distracted by the cat so you have to start over. But, <laughs> Brassica rapa is the second really big genus. And the third is Brassica napis, which is thought to be an ancient hybrid of Oleracea and rapa. And that has rutabagas, which is what I'm planting today, as well as your oilseed rape and canola and those sorts of crops. Okay, those are Brassica napis. So these three are very, very closely related. They can all produce, they're interfertile, they can produce fertile hybrids, i.e. where these guys come from. And they're extremely common worldwide. These are, these are cornerstones of the garden. They are, however, not the only brassicas that we grow. So radishes, here comes the distraction, adorable little distraction. Radishes are a different genus um, Rapinus, um, and <laughs> I've done way too many takes thanks to these little fellas, right? Uh, radishes are a completely different genus, and they grow about the same as these guys. You can consider them in the same category. Uh, less commonly grown are all of the, um, the, the horseradish, okay, um, all of the cress type plants, if it has cress in the name, it's a brassica, and um, woad, the dye plant woad, Isatis tinctoria, is also a brassica and follows these same rules. The reason these are such good early season plants is because they can take a frost. Depending on which species you're talking about, summer annuals, summer biannuals, summer perennials. <coughs> Horseradish is a perennial. The rest the, of the ones that we grow commonly are annuals or biannuals. And <laughs> you're not going to let me do this, are you? And they, uh, <laughs> goofy little guy. They, I'm going to get licked to death on film. That's what's going to happen. Um, but regardless of which of those they are, the ancestors are all biannuals or perennials of all the ones we commonly grow. And because they're cold, hardy biannuals, you can plant them as soon as you can get your hands in the ground and away from the king cats. And um, they can take a frost quite easily. So you don't have to worry about planting them too early. The young leaves are sensitive to a hard freeze, but they can take a frost. This is why these are the first ones that we get to. Um, I'm planning for two different purposes here this morning. The first is for seed. So for seed, I have individual plants that I grew last year and saved these in a root cellar. Okay. They started to grow a little bit, which is why they look so blanched, and these will suffer some sunburn but they'll be okay in the end. They'll come back. These leaves will burn a bit, but they'll come back. So these rutabagas are a biannual. If the camera jiggles, the cat's going to bother Renee. Um, these rutabagas are a biannual. So if you want seed, you need to save some of the roots from your first season and replant them in the second season. 
So I'm just going to poke a hole right <coughs> down through this cardboard and replant this rutabaga root. And I'm going to plant it pretty deep there, kind of protect it from sunburn as much as I can. Okay. And this row will not be harvested for food. This row will be harvested for seed. I like using these digging bars for poking holes in what's left of the cardboard. If you want to see how this garden bed was prepped, this was prepped late last fall, the very first video on this YouTube channel is how to winter prep a garden so that you're just ready to go in the spring. These will go back in. Now they produce those roots in their first year, but they'll produce, as soon as they start to grow, they will bolt flower and produce seed this year. If you want to keep seed and keep your varieties true, you do need to separate them. So I'm going to grow turnips. Turnips will usually produce seed their first year and grow as an annual. So I will not put turnips in this little garden square. I'll put them over in the other one so that they don't cross. Now, if I get some hybrid seed from my rutabagas and my turnips, I really don't care that much. These are not ancient varieties that I'm trying to keep absolutely pure. I just want good things to eat. And they're close enough in culinary properties that I don't care if there's a hybrid here or there. What I'm going to plant at a good distance are these guys. These are stalks from walking stick kale that I grew last year. Again, I want to produce seed from these, so these are going to go way over in a different direction when I plant these out. But just like these guys, I put them in a pot and just stuck them in a root cellar. You can see they started to grow a little bit, um, and, and they're you know really blanched out. But I will go, I will prepare a little bed for these way away <laughs> from this stuff because I really don't want the genetics of these contaminating my nice tall walking stick kale. And then these stalks of kale will grow um, and also bolt this year and produce seed for me for next year. Okay. Um, now in this same half of a bed I want to put rutabagas for culinary purposes. So I have seed that I purchased at the store. These will give me a ton of seed for next year, but I don't have my own safe seed yet. So I pour these out. They're about the size of a mustard seed. Mustard are in the same genus, are also a brassica. Black mustard is black brassica nigra. Um, and I just like to broadcast seed these as though they were a grass seed. Just sprinkle them all out. And then to further spread them, I will just rake them in. Just to further spread them out. Make sure they're in good contact with the soil. And if they come up a little too thick, I can, th I can just thin them out. If they come up a little too thin, I can sprinkle a little bit more. I'm going to pull some of this soil over, because I did get a little bit more here and a little fewer here. Also take note, let me show you this. This stuff come, is it in frame, beloved? Mm -hmm. Okay. This stuff coming up wild, this is kinopodium. This is a goose foot. Okay. Um, the Kinopodiaceae, we're going to give it its own video, but I don't want this much coming up this thick, right, with my rutabagas. But this is a volunteer plant that will always save a little patch of it, and we, this is what we use instead of spinach. We'll talk about that more in a future video, so I just wanted to mention, mention it since I see all that coming up there. And 
it's not going to last too long. We'll just rake this all in, nice and happy. And we have planted our patch of rutabaga. Kale, you can do exactly the same thing. Um, if you cast the camera over here, this is where we planted onions and we interplanted the kale with the onions because the kale roots won't inhibit the onions ability to make a bulb, right? So they can grow together quite nicely. And um, over there we have radishes planted already. So we are well into planting the coal crops I have over in the hay field. Um, starting to reclaim some of that for garden and I have some mounds of walking stick kale planted out there already as well. And the spring garden is off and rolling. So if you're enjoying these videos, if you're learning something from them, give them a thumbs up so the algorithm knows to show them to other people. And I will see you next time at Old Rudy's Rising Farm.